Membranes surround all types of cells. There are also membranes surrounding organelles within inside eukaryotic cells. All these membranes, whether they're inside cells or around the outside of a cell, they all have the same basic components to their structure, which allow them to carry out their functions. In this section, we're gonna look at this structure and how it determines the functions of the membranes. So, what are these functions? Well, first and foremost, it is a physical boundary between the outside and the inner side of the cell. But more than that, it can actually control what substances pass in and pass out. Therefore, it is known as a partially permeable membrane. This means you can have different compositions of fluids within a cell and on the other side, outside a cell as well. It also has functions that allow it to interact with its surrounding environment. This includes cell recognition, so cells can recognize each other, whether they're foreign or whether they're your own cells, and also cell signaling for communication between cells within tissues and organs. And it also has a role to play in the shape of a cell because it's where the cytoskeleton attaches is onto the underside of the cell membrane. It doesn't give any strength or support, that would be a cell wall, but it does contribute to the shape. Now, in order for cell membranes to carry out their many functions, they have a structure made up of the following components, which we're gonna explain in more detail uh, throughout this presentation, phospholipids and proteins. If you've watched my video on lipids, you already know about phospholipids, okay? They are made up of a glycerol, two fatty acids, and then a phosphate head. The phosphate head sticks up and the tails stick out the other side of the glycerol. Sometimes the phosphate can have a carbohydrate attached to it and we call this a glycolipid. Glyco for the carbohydrate and the lipid for the fatty bit. Okay, and this is important in cell recognition. Now, why are these phospholipids used to make membranes? Well, it's because of the properties of this phospholipid molecule. It's the fact that it has a hydrophilic head. The head is polar, the phosphate is polar. It will interact with water, hydrophilic, water-loving. The hydrophobic tails are water-hating, hydrophobic, and they will do whatever they can to uh, repel water. This means that when you put these molecules together, when you place them in water, they will arrange themselves in a, sp in a specific way so that the tails avoid water and the heads interact with water. And it's what we call a phospholipid bilayer. Now these phospholipids are not bound to each other. There's no bonds between them holding them in these positions. They're just there because of this property, because they're doing whatever they can for the tails to avoid the water. But this gives membranes a really interesting fluid property because phospholipids can be pulled out, that you can add more in, so you can change the shape, size of membranes very, very easily, which is really important as you'd expect when it comes to cell division and creating new cells. So those are the phospholipids. But what about the other major structural component of the membrane, the proteins, okay? Now these are positioned uh, in the membrane. They can either go all the way through the membrane, which is what we call an integral protein, or they can just be on the outer part of the membrane, which is called a peripheral protein. And they have lots of jobs to do. They can form channels, okay, to allow certain molecules to pass through. Not everything can just squeeze through uh, at the membrane. And we did talk about how the function of uh, membranes is that it can control what goes in and out of a cell. Well, these channels, these protein channels, are part of that. They also have a role in terms of cell recognition because you can have carbohydrates attached to proteins to form a glycoprotein in the membrane, and that can help with cell recognition. They can also act as receptors for hormones or other signal molecules to bind to these proteins, and then that will cause a reaction to happen inside the cell. So it's really important with that idea of cell signaling and communication. And they can also help with structure because this is where the cytoskeleton is gonna to bind to. It's gonna to bind to these proteins from the inside of the cell. And then these proteins can also be enzymes and directly catalyze reactions right there in the membrane. Now these proteins are just dotted throughout the membrane amongst the phospholipids. Again, they are not bonded to the phospholipids. They can move about uh, and change position depending on what the cell is up to. And this is why we call this structure of the membrane the fluid mosaic model. It can move around and it's a mosaic with all the proteins in there. There are a couple of other things, some of which I've already mentioned, structures inside the membrane. Carbohydrates do play a role in membranes. They can be attached to either the phospholipids or the proteins to make glycolipids or glycoproteins. They're important with cell recognition and cell signaling. And also you do get cholesterol in between phospholipids, which help control how fluid the membrane is.
Now you should be able to label a diagram like this of the fluid mosaic model.